That was the life. Began to live. A little while later, I was born into this world. And of course, my mother and father, they, you know, said, isn't he wonderful? Uh, this is a, you know, this is our son. Glory to God. But I had an elder brother, see, so I wasn't the firstborn. I had an elder sister too. But this is our son, you know. And my mother used to pat me on the head, said, you keep going, son, you'll come out on top. And I have. But you see, they didn't understand then what this was all about. They didn't understand that that birthing was something under the control of the God of creation. That he had brought forth something onto this earth which was going to be to fulfill the divine purposes of God. Think about it. And of course, for many years, I had no idea. I had no idea that I was on this earth to fulfill the purposes of God. I thought the best you could do maybe would be to become a preacher, which I did. You know, and I thought I was doing a pretty good job until I began to see the truth. Then I realized what a waste of time, you know. Well, I don't think it was. I think maybe I learned a lot of things there. But see, the son, the child is born, but the Christ is given. Never born. That's why I say you, you in the reality of what you are, has never been born on this earth. That spirit comes out of Christ. And that's who you are. Well, the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, must be in his body. We must see the Christ in here. And if you haven't seen the Christ in here, I'm going to ask you today, would you make this priority number one in your life? Hang into God until you get it. God is not hanging out on you. He's not going to make you wait a fortnight. and ah, you've been messing around too long. No, sir. He will give you when your heart really opens to the Lord. He will give you the desire of your heart. Let it be the desire of your heart. Father, I want, I want to see. I want to see the Christ in me. I want to see my true identity by the Spirit, not with these eyes, but by the Spirit. I want to know that that Christ is the reality of who I am. And when I understand that, your sickness will disappear. Why? Because you cannot be sick. Because you have discovered your true identity. And you will begin to declare it. And if you haven't declared it yet, you better start to declare it. And you will never hear yourself again say, I am sick. But you will begin to declare, Christ is my identity. That's who I am. He cannot be sick. And I refuse to come back under all of the trauma and the upset and the whatever else is involved in that sickness. Operations, buying expensive drugs that really don't make you, don't, don't heal you at all. They're just making the people rich that sell that stuff, that's all. So uh, this, this is the appearing, it says here, of our Savior Jesus Christ. Now listen to what he says. Who has abolished death? What, you mean to tell me that Jesus Christ has abolished death? Yes, sir. Well, then why are all these people dying? If he's abolished death, why are we dying? Oh, well, we make the choice, don't we? We make the choice. Isn't this interesting when you start to think about this? Why do people die? Because they made the choice. Well, I've made the choice and I'm not going to die. I was very amazed on this trip to meet a lady and I was talking about immortality and she said, I've already got my headstone. It's already been made. The only, the only thing not on it is the date. Well, I said, you might as well have put that on too. It wouldn't matter. 
I said, you've got a headstone already made, you are going to die. She said, isn't everybody? I said, no, they're not. Have a look at this guy, he's not going to die. Oh, well, she hadn't heard anybody, I don't think, saying that before. You see what I'm saying? He has abolished death. That means he took death head on and destroyed its power. Now, what are we talking about here? Because this is important. You see, when Jesus Christ died, he could face that death, the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him. Why? Because he was going to destroy death for every man. He was destroying death for every man. That's what he was doing. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when the soldiers were there, he's got his disciples around him, and Judas walks up to him and kisses him, which was the sign, and the soldiers arrested him. From that moment, he had made a covenant with his father. He had drunk the cup, which was the covenant of his blood, not the blood that was in his veins. That was the covenant of his life for us. And God said, if you will take your humanity into death, you will destroy death for every man. What, a, what an experience. What, what a thing that he's done for us. Beloved, you know, we say, Lord, we love you. Oh, God, yes, you're wonderful. We worship you. But when you start to really get down to what did he do for us? He destroyed death. The one thing in our life that, that has bugged every man that's ever lived on this earth except Jesus Christ. He was the only one that wasn't upset by it. In fact, he went into death willingly. And Jesus Christ made a very interesting statement on this uh, particular issue. And what is that? He said, no man takes my life from me. Jesus Christ was not murdered on that cross. And I've heard preachers say, oh yes, the Jews murdered him. Nobody murdered him. And nobody killed him. He said, I've got power to lay down my life. And I've got power to take it again. 